What's up, Infected? It's Wolf of the Quarantine, and today I'm going to be taking a look at a game that is currently seeking funding on Kickstarter by the name of Streets of Steel. Now, I need to note a couple of things. Uh, this is just kind of one of the player boards. It's not the actual box uh, because it is prototype components uh, because it is currently seeking funding on Kickstarter. So keep that in mind. Uh, what you see here is, of course, not the final product. It is subject to change. So what is Streets of Steel? Well, Streets of Steel is a retro-style side-scrolling beat-em-up basically. Uh, similar to the ones that you used to play back in the arcade, uh, things like Double Dragon, uh, Streets of Rage, the old Simpsons game that I played the hell that I played the hell out of back in the day. And it's basically one of those games. It's a retro style side-scrolling beat-em-up. So let's find out if you're a bad enough dude to save the president's daughter. So this is basically uh, the game set up and ready to go. Now, uh, there's a couple things. These, uh, all these cardboard cutouts here, uh, these are supposed to be minis and standees in the final product. Uh, my stands don't really fit too well on them, and it was just it's just easier for me to have them laying down like this. Plus, you can see them a little better than if they're standing up. Uh, but just know, in the final product, these are going to be minis that you can see actually on the part. But again, prototype component. So the game is pretty simple and pretty basic. So what you're going to do is you're going to determine your player order as you see up here. So we're making Average Joe our first player, and I have it set up for a four-player game. Now the players are starting here in the far left column, and each area is a square consisting of two halves. So this is a space, this is space, 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 so on and so forth. Your ultimate goal is after everybody's moved, this whole tile is going to go away, slide this way, and a new tile is going to be put there. So if you're on this tile, you're just going to die. But to determine how much of a bad enough dude you are, you have quarters which mine only came with four, but easy mode is five quarters. So we're gonna assume that we have five quarters here because we are not a very bad, not a very bad dude. Now your turn is gonna be pretty simple. You have three actions that you get to spend and you spend them by doing certain actions. So in this case, you're gonna get to move the number of uh, little green arrow that you see there. So average Joe uh, could move two times. So where he's here, he can go one, two if he wanted to and there's no diagonals or you know however he wants to move so the other action is you can attack the person so in this case average joe gets two yellow punch dice and two kick dice and then you're going to roll in this case i have two kicks and one punch you compare that with the in this case we are looking at fire bugs which are pretty hot if i may say so myself uh, <laughs> It's a joke about fire. Um, anyways, the uh, they have. I just did three damage. You look at their defense value. They have three, because I met or exceeded that. This would die, and when you kill one, you would just gain a will, which I'll explain in a second. And then you can proceed to do any other actions that you would like to do. The other two actions you could do is you can taunt and special attack. Now taunting, you're just going to take a will token and add it to your player board, and then you can also use special attacks which are actually listed on here. Now the number value that you see, in this case four, four, nothing special, you can spend four will tokens and just do what the text says. Now you can also spend these will tokens to reroll dice, so let's say, in this case, I rolled that. I could spend this will token and try to reroll it, and I still didn't get it, so I could spend another one, so on and so forth, as long as you have will to spend. Now. Once you have done all three of your activations, before it's the next player's turn, you're going to flip over the top card here. So in this case, we have Kilgaroos. There are none on the field, so you would discard it and draw the next card instead. So now it's Firebugs. So Firebugs are all going to activate, and it says each Firebug targets the hero with the most health and attacks with two Danger Dice. The Danger Dice are these terrible dice. They're very random, there's a 50% chance you'll even get hit, but one of them can hit you twice, so it's a possibility of four damage if you ever have to roll them. So what's going to happen is, if you notice, all of the enemies are in the right column of each square. So, the in this case, they're all throwing Molotovs, so we'll start with this one. She would roll the two damage dice and attack whoever's the most. In this case, Mayor Von Damage is has the most, so he's right here. We're going to roll these. He gets no damage, and you're going to take this and slide it over to the right, just so you know you've activated that one. We'll go to this one, so on and so forth, until they've all activated. Once they do, they reset, they go back over into their right column, and then it is now 
Candy's turn. Now let's say during Kiki's movement here, she moves over into this space here before her final destination. She's gonna take this and draw the top item card. So now Kiki has some really spiky boots. So she can discard this and add one kick to one attack, which is great because she's already really good at kicking. So once everybody's activated, so it's it, Kiki's activation is done and she resolves her action card here, you're gonna pick up this board and anybody on it is dead. So in this case, average Joe is dead. This gets removed from the game. These slide over and a new tile comes out. And you're going to put the threat level that you see on each tile. So you have ones, twos, threes, and six. Well, he doesn't really have a threat level because he's the boss. So we're going to put one guy here, one guy here, and two fire bugs out and then now you're ready to go. Now at the beginning of an, act, uh, an activation, if you still have quarters left and you have a dead character, that character can spend a quarter and go ahead and spawn in on one of the far left tiles. Now there's a couple special things here. Uh, as you see here, this is difficult terrain. If you ever enter it, your movement immediately ends regardless of how much movement you have left. And then lastly, you have um, biohazards. So if you ever enter that, you're going to roll one danger die, and if it's anything other than a blank side, you take damage equal to whatever's on the back of this. So as you see, the numbers are a little different. So you're gonna take that much damage just because you entered into that space. Now once you've uncovered the last tile, you're gonna spawn the boss on here. And the boss is a little different. He has health and how much damage you need to inflict on him to inflict one bit of health. On top of that, once you've uncovered the final boss, you're going to take this deck of cards, you're going to remove from the game entirely, and then you're going to take out the actual deck that is meant for that boss. You're going to give it a good shuffle, and that is going to be your new monster activation deck. And there's one last thing I, I forgot to mention here. If you move out of a space with an enemy, so this kill guru here, if Kiki were to move out of it, so in this case, say she moves down here to try to get this item. If she moves out of it, then the enemy is going to roll dice that it shows here. So in this case, he gets to roll one kick die. It's just a free attack that is made against uh, Kiki. So anybody who's familiar with like Dungeons and Dragons, it's basically an attack of opportunity. This is gonna continue until the boss has no health left or all of the player characters are dead and they no longer have any more lunch money to spend in the arcade machine. And that is how you play Streets of Steel. So what do I think about the game? Well, starting with the artwork, I absolutely love the artwork in this game. I love the fact that A, if you're like me and have 10 million miniatures that you're never going to get around to painting and you feel obligated to paint them because they're beautiful minis, uh, they're offering standees in the game as well, which also have the really nice pixel artwork, which I love. And if you're like me, uh, you know, might be wearing my age on my shoulder a little bit here, but a lot of my youth was spent not eating lunch at school, saving my money, and go into the arcade and wasting more money than I care to admit, playing everything from Metal Slug to uh, Streets of Rage to, was Streets of Rage in the arcade? I don't think it was. Um, what's that? There, there's several of, of them that I can't for the life of me remember now that I'm on the spot. Uh, but like the Simpsons one is one that I bring up all the time because I played the hell out of that Simpsons game. Um, but, so if you're like me, games like this have a very soft spot for you anyways. I met my wife in an arcade. So there's that. But most importantly, what do I think about the gameplay? Well, the gameplay is super simple and super light and really fun. It's very basic. You have dice rolling, which is going to turn some people off, uh, but you can mitigate that by, granted you have to kill people to do it, but you can also taunt. Use one of your actions, taunt, and get a, uh, one of the blue uh, wisdom tokens and then you can re now re-roll dice. So you do have a little bit of mitigation. And then on top of that, the fact that the board is constantly moving to the right, you have to move off of your tile. Even if that means not worrying about uh, killing the guy that you're with and just getting off the tile, taking that attack, you know, take it to the chin, keep going because you don't want to die because mom only gave you so many quarters. <laughs> so it, it winds up keeping the game really fast paced. You're always progressing. And you really only have four different actions you can take. The game is really quick and plays really fluid. Now, what a lot of people aren't going to like about the game is, of course, dice. 
If you're not, you know, I don't like dice. I actually hate high luck games. Now this doesn't feel too bad because uh, the, the way the ratios are put. For example, the punch dice is a four out of six chance that you're gonna get a hit, but each side that has a hit is only one damage. However, the kick dice is a 50-50% chance that you're gonna actually hit, and but one of those sides has two hits. So now you can choose your character based on that knowledge. So how much luck do you want involved here? So of course there's always gonna be that luck, but uh, if you want to be able to do hit more, then and attack, you know, the, the punks that are a little bit weaker and you can get up the, your, your uh, blue stamina that way, then maybe choose um, Von Damage because he just throws four punch dice. But if you're like me, my favorite character is Kiki. She's just, she's a powerhouse with these uh, kick dice. <laughs> you could dish out some damage with her, uh, but you're not going to be hitting as often. So, A, you have that right out of the gates. You can kind of mitigate some of that luck by the choosing what character would fit your preference anyways. But then on top of that, you can, these those will tokens, you can use those to reroll those dice. So maybe you're one hit short of, you know, doing a damage to the final boss, or maybe killing the really annoying fire bug. So instead, go ahead and spend that will token. Yeah, you were trying to... Uh, trying to you know get enough to be able to use your super but maybe go ahead and spend one so now you kill that fire bug and then you get that power your your uh, will token back so there's a lot of decisions to be made and there's a lot of or not a lot i don't want to say a lot there's a bit of luck mitigation so even me somebody who doesn't like dice i was still able to thoroughly enjoy the game because you there are ways to kind of mitigate that as well uh, and then the fact that it is a fully co-op game other than that i couldn't really think of any negatives with the game outside of the you know that luck factor because at first while we were playing it i at first was like man this feels really really simple but then about halfway through the game like three of us died and we played with five quarters so now we're like okay this kind of got dialed up a notch and then before the final boss came out one more person died and the final boss came out, now two more people died. Now, we're down one person, and we only have three people left to kill the final boss. So it seems fairly balanced. If anything, it might be a little too difficult, because I could not imagine playing this game with only three quarters, which, if I'm not mistaken, that's the hard difficulty. I couldn't imagine playing this with that many quarters. I couldn't imagine playing this with anything less than five quarters, because we still barely made it out with our lives. Outside of that, I definitely recommend this game. We had a blast playing it, and while we played it, which this is gonna be a kind of a side rant, while playing it, and this doesn't happen to me very often, is my wife and I were playing it at one point, and throughout the entire game, we sat there and just talked about different things that happened back in, you know, with, with us in video games. Like, I, I brought up Metal Slug, like, man, I, I remember wasting so much money on Metal Slug. And then we started talking about how we met. We actually met on Dance Dance Revolution, and I made her angry because I chose the wrong song and didn't let her choose her difficulty. So it brought up a lot of reminiscing because of just the f overall feel of the game is very, very nostalgic. The, the overall aesthetic of it feels very retro. And it, it brings out, if you're somebody like me who used to spend a lot of time in the arcade, you're going to absolutely love this game. It's going to make you think of those, the, the older times, back when things were a little more simple, uh, when you were a kid and didn't have all the worries in the world. Anyways, this is turning into a rant. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'll see you guys next time in the quarantine.